During hemodialysis, if a patient's venous pressure begins to rise steadily while blood flow remains constant, what is the most likely cause? A. Kinked venous bloodline. B. Low dialysate flow rate. C. Arterial needle dislodgement. D. Increased heparin dosage. Answer A. A gradual increase in venous pressure typically indicates a downstream obstruction such as a kinked line, clotted dialyzer, or poor needle positioning. Correcting the obstruction restores normal flow and pressure. What is the primary reason bicarbonate is used in dialysate instead of acetate in most modern dialysis units? A. Bicarbonate is cheaper. B. It provides faster ultrafiltration. C. It maintains better acid-base balance with fewer side effects. D. It increases calcium absorption. Answer. C. Bicarbonate dialysate closely mimics natural plasma buffering, reducing patient fatigue and hypotension commonly seen with acetate-based dialysate. A hemodialysis patient's arterial pressure suddenly drops to minus 300 millimeters of mercury. What should the technician suspect first? A. Disconnected arterial line. B. Blood pump malfunction. C. Saline line infiltration. D. Clotting in the venous chamber. Answer A. A sudden extreme negative arterial pressure suggests a blockage or disconnection between the patient and the blood pump, requiring immediate investigation. Which of the following most accurately describes ultrafiltration and hemodialysis? A. Movement of solutes via diffusion. B. Fluid removal through hydrostatic pressure gradient. C. Exchange of ions through dialyzer membrane pores. D. Osmotic transfer caused by sodium gradient. Answer B. Ultrafiltration uses hydrostatic pressure to move excess water from blood to dialysate across the semipermeable membrane. A patient complains of chest pain during dialysis. What should be the technician's first action? A. Stop ultrafiltration immediately and assess vital signs. B. Continue treatment while notifying the nurse. C. Administer oxygen without assessment. D. Increase blood flow to reduce pressure. Answer A. Chest pain can indicate cardiac distress or air embolism. Stopping UF prevents further fluid shifts and allows safe assessment by nursing staff. A dialyzer shows a TMP, transmembrane pressure, that's gradually increasing during treatment. What does this most likely indicate? A. Blood leak. B. Membrane clotting or fouling. C. Machine calibration error. D. Reverse ultrafiltration. Answer. B. Rising TMP suggests that the membrane is clogging due to clotting or protein buildup reducing fluid removal efficiency. The conductivity alarm on a dialysis machine signals. What should the technician do first? A. Continue dialysis but reduce dialysate flow. B. Stop dialysis and check conductivity with an independent meter. C. Switch to bypass mode and restart. D. Add more bicarbonate to the dialysate. Answer. B. Conductivity changes may indicate incorrect electrolyte concentrations. The machine should be stopped and verified with a calibrated external meter. A new dialyzer is being primed. What is the most important reason for proper priming before connection to the patient? A. Remove sterilant residues and air. B. Increase blood temperature. C. Reduce conductivity. D. Adjust ultrafiltration rate. Answer A. Priming clears sterilant chemicals and air from the system to prevent hemolysis and air embolism. What should be done if the patient's blood pressure drops sharply during dialysis? A. Increase ultrafiltration rate. B. Return blood and place patient supine. C. Raise the head of the bed. 
D. Flush the system with dialysate. Answer, B. A sudden BP drop may indicate hypovolemia, returning blood and positioning the patient flat help restore perfusion before further assessment. What is the major role of the heparin infusion during dialysis? A. Prevent infection. B. Increase oxygen delivery. C. Prevent clot formation within extracorporeal circuit. D. Enhance ultrafiltration rate. Answer. C. Heparin minimizes clotting in bloodlines and dialyzer, ensuring consistent flow and preventing circuit loss. A patient's access site shows redness and warmth before treatment. What should the technician do? A. Proceed normally. B. Document and begin treatment. C. Notify the nurse before cannulation. D. Apply ice pack immediately. Answer, C. Redness and warmth suggest possible infection or inflammation. Nursing assessment is required before needle insertion. What should be verified on the dialysate delivery system before initiating dialysis? A. pH, conductivity, and temperature. B. Only ultrafiltration setting. C. Air detector sensitivity. D. Arterial pressure monitor. Answer A. Proper pH 6.8 to 7.6, temperature 35 to 37 degrees Celsius, and conductivity ensure dialysate safety and effective diffusion. What is the safest method to confirm proper needle placement in an AV fistula? A. Visual check only. B. Listening for brute and feeling for thrill. C. Injecting saline quickly. D. Using high pressure to test flow. Answer, B. A palpable thrill and audible brute confirm adequate blood flow and correct fistula access function. Why is dialyzer reuse regulated under strict protocols? A. To reduce waste. B. To prevent cross-contamination and ensure performance consistency. C. To increase patient comfort. D. To speed up treatment initiation. Answer, B. Reuse can introduce contamination or residual sterilant risks. Protocols ensure thorough cleaning and performance verification. Which of the following is a key indicator of inadequate dialysis? A. Elevated KT slash V below 1.2. B. Normal blood pressure. C. Clear dialysate lines. D. High hematocrit. Answer, A. A KT slash V less than 1.2 indicates insufficient solute removal and poor treatment adequacy. What action is taken if the dialyzer membrane ruptures and a blood leak alarm activates? A. Continue treatment at lower speed. B. Stop the machine and discard the dialyzer. C. Clamp the venous line only. D. Ignore if minor discoloration is seen. Answer, B. Blood leak contamination makes the dialyzer unsafe, treatment must stop, and the dialyzer replaced immediately. Which type of water treatment is essential before dialysate preparation? A. Deionization and reverse osmosis. B. Simple filtration. C. Boiling. D. Chlorination. Answer, A. Reverse osmosis ensures removal of dissolved contaminants that can harm patients if infused. A patient complains of muscle cramps near the end of dialysis. What is the most likely cause? A. Overheating of dialysate. B. Low blood flow. C. Excess fluid removal. D. Hyperkalemia. Answer, C. Rapid or excessive ultrafiltration leads to fluid and electrolyte shifts causing muscle cramps. Which symptom may indicate dialysis disequilibrium syndrome? A. Tremors and confusion post-treatment. B. High hematocrit. C. Increased urine output. 
D. Cold extremities. Answer A. Rapid solute removal during first or aggressive dialysis can cause cerebral edema leading to neurologic symptoms. Which safety check ensures prevention of air embolism? A. Air detector alarm and chamber inspection. B. High dialysate pressure. C. Heparin lock. D. Venous sampling. Answer A. The air detector ensures no air enters the venous return. Visual and mechanical checks are mandatory. What is the ideal storage temperature for dialysate concentrates? A. 0 to 5 degrees Celsius. B. 10 to 30 degrees Celsius. C. 40 to 45 degrees Celsius. D. Room temperature only. Answer B. Dialysate concentrates should be kept in a cool, dry range, 10 to 30 degrees Celsius, to maintain stability and prevent crystallization. When using a central venous catheter, which technique prevents infection? A. Use of clean gloves. B. Routine alcohol swab cleaning. C. Strict aseptic technique with sterile barriers. D. Avoiding flushing. Answer. C. Central line infections can be life-threatening. Sterile barrier precautions are mandatory. A dialyzer's blood leak test reads positive, but the dialysate remains clear. What should be assumed? A. False alarm. B. Microleak possible. Stop treatment. C. Proceed with caution. D. Recalibrate the alarm. Answer, B. Even without visible contamination, a positive leak test means potential blood exposure and mandates stopping treatment. What condition results from inadequate heparinization during dialysis? A. Hypotension. B. Circuit clotting. C. Dialysate contamination. D. Metabolic alkalosis. Answer, B. Low anticoagulation levels allow clot formation in dialyzer fibers, reducing treatment efficiency. Why must the extracorporeal circuit be checked for residual air after priming? A. To prevent clotting. B. To prevent air embolism. C. To maintain conductivity. D. To lower TMP. Answer, B. Any residual air can travel to the patient's circulation and cause fatal air embolism if not removed. A patient undergoing dialysis suddenly complains of shortness of breath and chest tightness. The technician notices frothy blood in the venous line. What is the most likely emergency? A. Hemolysis due to overheating dialysate. B. Air embolism entering the venous return. C. Blood leak in dialyzer fibers. D. Hyperkalemia from poor clearance. Answer B. Frothy or foamy blood and respiratory distress during dialysis strongly indicate air embolism. Immediate action clamping the venous line, stopping the pump, placing the patient on the left side with head down, and notifying the nurse is crucial to prevent cardiac arrest. During dialysis, the patient's venous pressure rises sharply while arterial pressure remains unchanged. What does this suggest? A. Clotting in the venous line or venous needle. B. Poor arterial needle placement. C. Air detected in the system. D. Machine sensor malfunction. Answer A. A sudden rise in venous pressure with stable arterial readings indicates a blockage or clot beyond the dialyzer, often in the venous needle or tubing. The technician should inspect and correct the obstruction before continuing. Which of the following conditions would most likely result from using dialysate with too high a sodium concentration? A. Hyponatremia and hypotension. B. Hypertension and excessive thirst post-treatment. C. Hypocalcemia. D. Hypothermia. Answer, B. 
High sodium dialysate causes osmotic water retention, leading to post-dialysis hypertension, edema, and increased thirst. Dialysate calibration and conductivity checks prevent such imbalances. When preparing for dialysis, the technician notes that the dialysate temperature is reading 41 degrees Celsius. What is the correct course of action? A. Begin treatment. Temperature is within acceptable range. B. Start at lower blood flow rate to compensate. C. Do not start treatment and report to the nurse immediately. D. Proceed but monitor blood pressure closely. Answer. C. Dialysate temperature above 40 degrees Celsius can cause hemolysis by damaging red blood cells. Treatment must not begin until the system is corrected and verified within the safe range, 35 to 37 degrees Celsius. A new technician accidentally primes the extracorporeal circuit with saline containing small air bubbles. The senior technician stops them immediately. Why is this step so critical? A. Air bubbles may interfere with dialysate flow. B. Air bubbles can cause inaccurate pressure readings only. C. Even small air bubbles can enter circulation and cause embolism. D. Air bubbles can deactivate heparin. Answer. C. Even tiny air bubbles can migrate into the bloodstream during dialysis and block vessels in the lungs or brain, leading to life-threatening air embolism. Proper priming and air detector checks ensure complete air removal before treatment begins.